So, the moment of truth, auction day. Now, it might look dauntingly terrifying, but it isn't. Follow our simple guide, keep your senses peeled, look and listen, and you'll see that now is the time to pick up a cut price classic. But research is everything. Trust no one and root through all the paperwork yourself. Our Aston allegedly had a guaranteed mileage of 51,000, yet we found an old invoice for work at 98,000. Naughty. Check too that there are actual bills to support any restoration work. And go early to crawl over the car from top to bottom. And if you don't know your axle from your elbow, then pay someone who does. Just make sure you know what you're doing because classic cars are just very old second-hand cars. When the bidding kicks off, set yourself a limit and stick to it. It's a buyer's market, so you can afford to keep your hands in your pockets until the next auction. And you'll have to pay buyer's premium. This one was set unusually high at 15% on the hammer price. Now, it's easy to get seduced by all the shiny metal, but you've also got to look at the cars that haven't been prepared because nobody's trying to take any money out of them, no profit. Now, you might be thinking that this is a very tired, sorry 944. I'm here to tell you that it's actually a very original, decent, unmolested car. You don't need to respray this bonnet. All it needs is a weekend with T-cut. These wheels here, they might put you off, but 25 quid, they'd come up like new, 100 quid the set. Come and have a look at this. I'm having to whisper in case anybody hears me, but look, it's reading 79,000 miles. Look at that seat, absolutely unworn. Look at the carpets, perfect. The, the pedal rubbers, the gear lever. This is probably a genuine mileage car. In the glove box is a Porsche service history. Now, I've spoken to the auctioneers and I know that I am the first person to ask for the keys. So nobody's opened it up, nobody's started it up. I have. It runs beautifully. I also know that it's being sold by a solicitor as an executor's estate. Someone's died. So it has to go today. There's no reserve. We might be looking at a bit of an earner today. And punters were bagging bargains all day long. No more. Our high mileage Aston Martin made... 16,500. And when we said the Ferrari 400 was unpopular, we weren't joking. How about just eight grand? The repatriated Triumph TR4 Roadster, 3,900. And that Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, it was dear. Eight grand. Okay, the Porsche is coming up next. Um, I reckon done, it's worth about 2,500 quid, but there's a, a good 500 pounds to sort it out. So I'm gonna set my limit at around 1,400 quid and stick to it. So, let's see. And lot 394, the Porsche showing right at the back. 500 pounds, we bid for it. 500, we bid for it, you bidding there? 500, 600, 700 seated. At 700 pounds now, at 700. 800 down here, near me, at 800. Standing left, 900 seated at 900, 1,000 near me, 1,100 in three places, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500. The bids at the back, 1,500 pounds. The bids at the back, the car is selling now. Fair warning, at 1,500, it's against you near me. 1,477. Listed by 100 quid, sold for 1,500 quid, but the cardinal rule is never, ever go over your limit. Someone's bought themselves a cheap Porsche. Six o'clock and it's all over. Long day. Most of the stuff made considerably less than estimate and that would have been absolutely inconceivable five years ago. Bargain of the day though has to be our Jaguar Mark II. Now this car comes with bills for around 30 grand's worth of restoration. It was knocked down today to a dealer for £10,250. That is the price of a second-hand Vauxhall Vectra. I know which one I'd have. Here we go. Next week, our guide to convertibles. They may be cold.